One of the most difficult things about being a Christian is treating people not as they deserve, but as Jesus calls us to treat people. And I think the reason for this is because when we live in a world that is so obsessed with fair trades, I mean, we, we gotta think about this. Ever since we grew up, since being a kid, it's been instilled in us that everything that we should do should always be fair trade. Like I remember when I was a kid in school and if I wanted to trade snacks during lunch with my my friend that bought a snack that I never had and he wanted this, I always had, had to make sure that it was a fair trade. And then growing up, collecting cards, collecting sports cards. And if you're trading cards, you gotta make sure that it's a fair trade or you even get the better side of it. And if you don't make that fair trade, then you shouldn't do it and you're a loser and you're or schmuck and all these things if you don't make fair trades and even in adult life it's interesting because we talk about businesses and when you make a business deal or you're giving money to something and there's an exchange it's always instilled in us because of our culture that we live in in our world that everything needs to be fair or it needs to be in your advantage. And if you don't live life that way, then all of a sudden you're a loser and you don't know what you're doing and you're not looking out for yourself. And it's just funny because that way of thinking can seep into our spirit and that's how we view the biblical lens. That's how we view our relationship with God. That's how we view our relationship with other people. And I love that in John chapter 13, Jesus models the ultimate uh, bad quote unquote bad deal in terms of how we see it because it, this is right before you know he's about to go and and get arrested and crucified and this is before that and he's actually eating with all the disciples he's hanging out with all the disciples and he begins to wash the disciples feet so basically they're all freaking out they're like wait whoa hold on what are we doing here Jesus no wh why are you washing our feet and Jesus begins to wash the feet of the disciples and he's basically modeling, saying that he he's modeling what a servant looks like. He's modeling what true servanthood is in the kingdom of God. And we see, you know, in verse uh, six here, it says, he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterwards you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me share with me. So Peter, it's so funny because Peter's like, you will never wash my feet. And Peter almost thought that this was like a test from Jesus where all these disciples are getting their feet washed. And Peter's like, no, 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 this is a test. Jesus wants us to object to this because he's so high and mighty and there's no possible way that he should wash our feet. So he objects because he feels like it's the right thing to do. And Jesus actually kind of flips the script on Peter and tells him, no, like, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you have no part of me. Because Jesus was trying to teach them something. And the something is actually really critical to the next part of the story, where it talks about, Jesus talks about, one of you are, are going to betray me. So this is a crazy scenario, guys. Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. And then after he washes all of their the disciples' feet, he goes, hey, one of you is going to betray me. And he basically, he... he outs Judas and says it's it, basically it's going to be you Judas and then later in the same chapter he tells Peter hey you're not going to come with me I, I'm going to go do something we know it to be the crucifixion I'm going to go do this and you're not going to come with me and Peter's like no no, no I'll, I'll be with you and Peter goes no or Jesus goes no Peter actually you're going to deny me three times so this is the crazy part of the story, guys, in John 13, is that Jesus washes the feet of the disciples and then tells him, hey, I know that you, both of you guys are going to betray me. He looks at Judas and he looks at Peter and he almost like, you know, places his hand on their shoulders and goes, hey, I know. I know what's going to happen. Now, what's the significance of doing that after he washed the disciples' feet? Well, it's basically showing that his love towards his disciples his servanthood and modeling to us, hey, sometimes life will require you to physically, or not physically, but metaphorically, wash the feet of people that wrong you. Life is going to require that you treat people not as they deserve. These guys were about to betray Jesus, and yet he washes their feet moments before he says, hey, I know what's going to happen. I know what you're going to do to me. 
And that is just such a crazy picture, guys. It's a crazy picture of the grace of God, but it's also a crazy picture of how we need to treat those around us. We think, hey, if you wrong me, I'm gonna wrong you. We think if you, if you mess up one time in a friendship, then we can't be friends anymore. If you betray me, then there's no point of reconciliation. We look at life as fair, but God calls us, and Jesus modeled it in chapter 13, we need to look at life in a different lens of how we treat people. Because a gospel that goes forth and changes lives is a gospel that is not the same as how people are living. I mean, think about this. I, 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 I say this all day long, but what's the point of living the same as the world and preaching the gospel because the, the, the people will look at our lives and say, well, why would I follow your God? Nothing's changed about the way that you live your life. But if we model the gospel in servanthood and actually being the hands and feet of Jesus, people will look at our lives and say, why did you do that? Hold on, hold on. Why did you do that when there was nothing in it for you? Wait a second. Why That person yelled in your face and you were so gracious and poised and why, how could you possibly do that? Wait a second, that person wronged you in your life and you're not talking bad about them behind their back and you're not gossiping and you actually have a heart of forgiveness and what's, what's up with that? That is what true evangelism looks like is being who Jesus calls us to be. So in your life, ask yourself this question. Have I been treating people as they deserve or have I been treating people how scripture tells me to treat people with love, with grace, with understanding, with forgiveness, because life is filled with people that are going to wrong you and hurt you. And, and scripture doesn't tell us that we just lie on our back and let people do whatever they want to us and, and just take advantage of, of our kindness and all that. No, 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 it doesn't. Like we, we can still stand up for ourselves. We can still be courageous and strong in this world, but I'm just saying sometimes we have the cynical view that the culture has put in our hearts where we only treat people how they deserve. And if you do this to me, that means I'm gonna do this to you. If you wrong me in this way, that, then that means that gives me permission to do this to you. No, 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 it's quite the opposite. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples as he knew they were going to betray him. And that's modeling something towards us. So in our lives, how can we treat people the way that God would want us to treat them? Because what's more important, let me ask you this, what's more important? That people encounter a real living God that could change their lives and set them free or that you could uh, feel good and get revenge? That you could, you could feel that some, the, the exchange is fair. What's more important, your pride or the gospel going forth and changing lives? I think the gospel going forth and changing lives is way more important. So in my life even, I'm like, okay, when people do things to me, what's my response? Because in order to do this in John 13, in order to model this, we have to be willing to respond, not react. When something happens to you, it doesn't elicit a reaction. Oh, all of a sudden it's just, it's an instinct and reaction. No, it requires a response, a thoughtful response of saying, okay, I know I'm feeling this way, but I submit my feelings to God. And instead I take a hold of what he would call me to do. And I act in love and I act in grace and I act in understanding. So this chapter really, I love this chapter because it models what Jesus puts forth as a guide of how we treat other people. If Jesus can face or can stand in the face of persecution and betrayal and still be loving and gracious in the way that he lives his life, then he's called us to do the same. So if you haven't gone through John 1 through 12 with us, we have videos all of John 1 through 12. Go back and watch them right now and let me know what your favorite part of the series this video has been so far in the comments and we'll see you next time.